Okay, ladies and gents, welcome. Uh, it's the first time we've gone to the openness of Arabia for Loyal Legends in a very long time, but it could be very, very good map here. And we have Red misclicking, so his villagers are currently standing on top of the house foundation instead of building the house foundation. But it's fine. We definitely didn't zoom in on that Red, but we can all relate. Uh, in the Red, the underdog in this game is Lean Mean Yogurt Machine. Definitely part of the reason I joined this one is this player's name. In the Blue... Playing as the Romans, we have Buck Buck Fire. And uh, the Romans were recently introduced to the game. Uh, they're a bit performing very well if you look at win rates. And I think it's for two reasons. I think it's because they have a consistent eco bonus and that everything's consistently like 5% more efficient, which I think is a bit underrated, can be very strong. But also is because it gives you a plan. If you know the Romans, you know they have good infantry. They have that double... Uh, armor on their infantry, and so I think people say, all right, I've got good eco. What am I making? I'm making infantry? Good. No confusion on that. Bam. Good eco and have a plan. It's kind of like Franks. Franks have good eco. Your plan is to go stable units. It just makes it easy for our for the low elo brains out there. Um, Now, there is an 80 elo discrepancy, which is about four or five wins, but this is pretty low, so it's really hard to tell I also don't know, like, maybe Buck Buck Fires never won a game, and maybe he's just been decreasing ever since, you know, doing placement games, or maybe he's in the midst of placement games. It's kind of tricky. But the map's open, so aggression should work pretty well. And Arabia really is the bread and butter of Age of Empires 2. Like, if you want the as much diversity as possible, I suppose it's not as much diversity as possible because there's no water, but if you want to get the most of every age, Arabia. Dark Age pressure is possible. Dark Age, Feudal Age, Castle Age, Imp. You can see some depth in all of that. So thus far, actually really liking how both players have played it. I think I would prefer Red because he's produced more villagers. I also am surprised at 320 ELO that we saw in early Lumber Camp. So that's a sign that Red maybe has heard me complain about people not doing that early uh, many, many times. Um, Blue's going to do the same. And Blue is going to bring in this elephant here. Let's see. Low elo elephant lore. Blocked with the goat. Do we see a garrison or does it just run? When I first started, I just ran. Nice. Very well executed there, Blue. I like it. All right. So uh, map-wise, you know, map's pretty open for both. But I think the golds could be problematic on the front. So players will need to pay attention to that. Particularly Red's gold. Both because it is on a hill. But also because red is uh, Turks. And if Turks don't have gold, they're normally out of options. But in terms of the order of things, the, the build order, it's been looking pretty good. The scouting's looking pretty good for these guys. It's crazy, man. It's been years since I started Loey the Legends. I say this a lot when we're casting like 6, 7, 8, maybe even 900 ELO. I'm impressed with them. But even this, the fact that this is 300 and it's only been two minutes of TC idle time is pretty impressive. Again, I do not know exactly how many games these players have had to get up to this point. Now, I've experimented a little bit with the Romans, played with and against them, and their their economy is fantastic, um, which it goes a long way, right? Unit options can be problematic for them, though. So I think, you know, like not getting Bracer really hurts. And uh, ranged units really aren't a great thing for them long term. But if you're going to stick with cabin infantry and you like that, and maybe if in combination with some siege, so they've got some good, pretty good scorpions, the Romans might be a sieve for you. Hey, Blue, are you here, bro? We good? Okay, maybe seeing the elo a little bit here as Blue is controlling his scout. I'm sure he assumes that these villagers are currently on a task. They're not currently on a task. There we go. There we go. Okay. So blue is 500 food. Blue is probably thinking, man, I really want to click up to the next stage here. Blue, you have the food for it. You don't have the buildings yet. Rookie mistake here. It's happened to the best of us. Please produce more villagers and or make a building. We have elephants for red. We'll bring that in next to the TC for some food. Red scout just chilling on the edge of the map right now. Multitasking being hard and all that. Now, maybe you're starting to see the elo a little bit more after the first 15 or so villagers 
players started to struggle a little bit more. But I'm liking it so far. I think Red's position is preferred, though. He just simply has more villagers. And having more villagers is always what you want to lean towards in these types of games. And it's also a sign, right? I've watched tens of thousands of games. The player who does a better job creating villagers in the Dark Age typically is going to do a better job in Feudal and whatever else. But we'll see. Okay. <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, the previous game, we had 600 ELO players who were not taking boars. And now we have 300 ELO players taking both of their elephants. That is pretty wild. I wonder if this elephant's going to be taken or if he's just supervising the gold. Okay, so four villagers on gold. A villager going to stone. When I first started, I would put like one villa on gold and then one villa on stone and just call the day. A little bit of everything. I didn't have a plan with it. I just got to did a mix. Elephant number two gets brought in. Blue catching up in the vill count now because red has forgotten a little bit. And our Roman player, Buck Buck Fire, has located the opponent. That's an important aspect to bring up here. He knows about the gold. He knows about the opponent's TC. What does Red know? He knows that the earth is flat and that if he takes two steps to the right, he falls off a cliff. Important intel in these times. Um, finally, though, the mill comes up. So, yeah, it's always tricky because you need two Dark Age buildings. But that'll be good. All right. So... You now have the buildings and the resources to go up to the next stage. Do you do it if you're blue? Or are you thinking about something else? Maybe looking at the scout? Yes, we do. We see Loom. And then we see... Uh, we see Feudal Age. Now, I'm a little worried for Buck Fuck Fire because there's potential here for Red to make army. Red has a barracks already. Red Scout still hasn't moved in the last 10 minutes. And it's been a 12-minute game. But, uh, you know, with that barracks being there, we could see Militia. Also opens up the potential to maybe make an archer range or a stable after the barracks. Hmm. So think about it. Red's in the dark. He might just go defensive towers everywhere. He might just be terrified. T90, you said Blue's name wrong. Did I mix the F and the B and say, no, I, my, the name's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Okay, eco upgrades coming in. And we're going to see farms. I mean, occasionally, there's not a lot of wood. So there's not going to be that much farming, but just tons of stone and tons of gold. You said F twice? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Red is angry. Red is angry, and he's standing on the carpet of death, and he dies. And Blue rang the town bell to do that, but Blue will be very satisfied with that, because Blue's scout is damaged. And Red says, idiot horse. <laughs> I'm liking this game more already. I love it when people chat. Well, let's review. Was, was Lean Mean Yogurt Machine the idiot, or was it the horse? Let's see. Let's review. Okay. So here comes Red. I'm guessing he's trying to move and he clicks the farm? Uh, maybe he tried to click the vill. It is funny how he ends up standing directly on that carpet. But yes, he tries to flee, he dies. Listen, lean, mean yogurt machine, I don't know you. I don't know exactly what you tried to do there. Very fast typing with idiot horse comment though. You have real potential. I'm going to say it's partially your fault and partially the horse's fault. I'm not going to put that all on the horse or on you. I think according to their profiles, one player's from the U.S. and the other one's from the U.K. So, I mean, that combined with their names, they could be able to jabber back and forth in English to each other. But no chatter from Blue. Blue just passing here through Red's Farms. Just looking to see what the opponent's up to. But I, I do not think at this level they make informed decisions based on these things. Oh, God. Red's upset. 
Okay, villagers got very angry about the scout's presence. Okay, wood upgrade, farm upgrade for Buck Buck. Not bad. Tons of food. So he has gone for the more common approach of being heavier on wood and food and then going to stone and gold later. And Red has gone for the opposite approach and he's going to have so much gold and stone. This guy's never going to make it to Castle Age at this rate. But it's a chill game. We're not in a rush, guys. We're just hanging out. A horse died. There was no funeral, unfortunately, but we're just hanging out. Everyone's having a good time here. Loey the Legends is all about the vibes. But... Also, you could be in the midst of battle at any point in time, so, you know, maybe get a move on. Is Red going to buy food? I think Lean Mean Yogurt Machine is going to buy food. The The market is his yogurt machine. Yep, just buys food, sells stone. Oh, my God. Okay, bye-bye, gold. Bye-bye, stone. <laughs> oh, God. He's murdered the market. <laughs> he just murdered the market. Oh, my goodness. Well, at least he knows what resources he needs for Castle Age. Stonks. <laughs> but now he needs another building, which I think he forgot about. And now he's going to go for the blacksmith. Uh, 23 eco for red, 21 eco for blue. Blue has the resources for Castle Age, but needs the buildings. And I remember blue had the uh, resources for feudal and needed the buildings and didn't know that. So I don't know if Blue's thinking about that right now. But okay, Red's on the way up. He clearly wants a castle though, right? We've seen a lot of gunpowder today, so I think we could see the same. Does Red seem a little irked to you guys? I know he just said idiot horse once, but even the way that he pulled all the vills to build the market and all the vills to attack the scout and how quick... He, he hit his market. Like, it just seems like he might be... He might have had a bad day. Or he's a little hyper, you know? Had an extra cup of coffee or something. Because I'm thinking... He may want to go over to Blue's base... To drop this castle. In the event that he's feeling a little bit perturbed. Okay, buy stone, sells wood, buy... I mean, guys, why do we have wood economy? So we can sell it to get gold. Why do we have gold economy? So we can buy stone. Why do we have stone economy? Well, for a castle eventually. But that's basically how red exists right now. Meanwhile, blue's just chilling out. Oh my god, red. Oh, you're, you're about to embarrass yourself so much, buddy. He says, is your friend spectator? If they are, I will find out and report, question mark. Well, Buck Buck Fire seems pretty nice, so... Maybe I could consider him my friend. Blue says, what? Question mark. So they have noticed that I'm spectating this game, which is just the funniest thing because I've spectated hundreds and thousands of Loey the Legend games. And twice today, people have noticed me as a spectator. But they don't know it's me, right? They don't know someone's casting this. What? How are you going to find out? Are you, is your dad work for Microsoft? How are you even going to know? Like, if I was Blue's friend and I was feeding him information about how your scout was attacking on the carpet. Like, what's... what? Okay, anyways, moving on. Very interesting development in this game. We now have the very late man-at-arms rush from uh, Blue. And I'm worried for Blue because this is a very aggressive castle from Red. And Red doesn't really seem to be in a friendly mood. Okay, we have a university. I'm going to guess that he might go for murder holes here. Now, nah, don't spectate all Red's games just to freak him out. So many people have told me I, every time I see a spectator, I worry that T90 is spectating. I've heard that for, like, for years, but I've never spectated a game where someone said, like, noticed the spectator uh, until today. This has now been twice. There's something really good about Red, and it's that he has a plan, and he commits to that plan, and he has intent behind it. Blue is just hanging out, having a good time, making a couple units. These things look cool. Let's make a couple walls. We don't have our buildings. It's still fine. You know, there's just a difference here. And uh, 
you know, look at Red already moving out. Like, he's ready to kill. I think Blue's in trouble. He's in big, big trouble here. Could even be another castle from Red. And, you know, things you look to if you're Blue is, uh, you know, click up to Castle Age. He doesn't know it's a castle drop from his opponent. He maybe tried to scout it. His scout's been fairly active here. But actually, that's auto scout, so... Easy to work on, though. If you end up watching this game later, Buck Buck Flyer, your economy's been really good. Like, it's been much better than Red's, despite whatever this shows, because market usage really screws up what shows here. The food and wood economy's been good. The balance on when you go to gold is good. It's just you need your buildings. And also, Turkish gunpowder is really difficult to deal with. We've got murder holes here for Red. He's really concerned that his opponent could potentially rush down this castle with something. Will you send the players the link after this? I really don't have an easy way besides adding them on Steam. So I'm just... You know, typically I just I upload my stuff and they may up, end up finding out and leaving a comment. All right, so I said Red had intent. So let's see him here. And there he goes, shooting from behind the wood line. Does Blue react to this? Well, no reaction yet. Painful stuff for Blue. Blue is making scouts. Still has lots of resources. The thing about the Janissary, though, is it's really hard to kill with anything. But it's costly. You produce it out of a castle. And it's quite a bit of food and gold. But, again, at low elo, you need a game plan. You need a strategy. And you just gotta stick to it. That's the biggest thing. Pick any sieve, just go into it, say, hey, this is what I'm making. At the start, you do that. Later on, you adapt. I don't know if Blue is gonna have what it takes to stop this here. I think Turks are top five in win rates uh, at low elo, by the way. A lot of people pick Turks and just go for Janissaries. I was looking at win rates recently. Uh, Romans are actually number one, which is interesting, but the sample size is quite low, right? Uh, they, but they have been in the game a decent amount of time by now. And scout's still being created. There's Auto Scout, though. Auto Scout just passing. Red saw it. Red very amped up right now because he saw that spectator, and he's like, oh, I'm going to make a second castle. You know. He's going to report it, guys. He's going to report it. Let's remember as well that maybe that does happen. Maybe that has happened to Red. It's possible Red will be at, would be acting slightly differently if he knew that thousands and thousands of people could possibly see this game. So I suppose if you're ever tempted to act in a way that would be out of character for you, just think, what if thousands upon thousands of people could possibly see my actions here today on the internet? Oh god, Red is currently attacking the barracks. Oh, he's throwing so hard! He's lean, he's mean, he's throwing his units, and now Blue clicked them away. Okay, so a little bit of mistake in micro from both players there. But that's honestly really good for Blue. He should have had, he had no business killing that amount of units. He won't kill them all, but he will kill the majority of them. And that makes this game a lot closer. Blue's plan was make infantry with the Romans. Blue still making infantry with the Romans. Infantry is not what you want against gunpowder. Hmm. I had a guy claim I made a map hack that trapped his units, and then made an and then another guy said I somehow cheated because I made a bunch of hussar. Got it. People people say all sorts of stuff on the internet uh, or within games to make them feel better about losing. It can never be me. It has to be my opponent has cheated or they have gone for a cheesy strategy or... Stop beating me with this strategy that makes me really uncomfortable, guys. Such a noob strat, even though it's just killed me. It's okay to be frustrated, but everyone copes with it differently. It's so funny, though. When you look at it from the outside, even if you're someone that can get frustrated, you see somebody else that's, that's you know, getting annoyed or whatever, it's really easy to look at it and be like, okay... Well, they just need to use their brain here. And, well, the GG is called. And, unfortunately, for Buck Buck Fire, he just got destroyed by gunfire. Um, 
In the end, the game wasn't that close. In the end, I suppose blue will not get reported by red for me spectating, which is very good. We get to maintain blue. But yeah, like, I think blue's a bit newer. Um, and he didn't have a, a strong game plan. It was just not... Like, you remember that moment in this game where red did so many ridiculous things with the market to get castle? It actually kind of worked. It blew at a market and balanced his eco to get castle earlier. Could have been a different game. But red, with the 21-minute castle time, was able to accomplish so much because it took blue 30 minutes to get there. So that's, uh, you know, just comes down to commitment more than the units and whatever else. Lessons to learn, things, things you'll figure out. I think how blue played shows me that over time he will actually be the better player. Like, Picking a sieve with one strat in mind is good, but an overall play, it's not quite as diverse, right? If you're using the market heavily and going for castle drops. I think blue would be fine, but again, lots of lessons to learn there. Um, And the chatter wasn't too bad. It was, it was funny, though, <laughs> that he saw the spectator. He was like, oh, man, must be your buddy. Do people do that at 400 ELO? <laughs> I guess if you I guess if you make it down to 400 ELO, you might have had a bit of a losing streak. And maybe Red's really desperate for wins, you know? And so he, he felt like maybe other people would be desperate for wins too, so they might use their friends to cheat. But nah, it's all good. There, Blue just said what, and then there was nothing more said about it. Good stuff. Again, uh, resources collected always pretty deceiving in these because uh, let's say you have 100 food, right? It shows that 100 food you collected. But then when you sell that 100 food, which means you lose that food, it doesn't subtract the food, but it adds the gold. So I think with how much red used the market, it's not a true sign of what the economy difference actually was. However, red did have more resources collected in the end, I'm sure. GG. All right, guys. So this wasn't the closest game I've ever uploaded to my channel. Uh, so we're just going to have Hardy edit in some Teutonic Knights doing some really cool things. This outro just to make it a little bit more special. But... I thought it was kind of funny that, uh, you know, this guy got a little perturbed by the spectator thing. And it was twice in the same day, by the way. Uh, twice in the same day, people were like, yo, what's the spectator thing? Which I actually haven't had happen, believe it or not, before. Uh, I did want to end this all on a really happy note. So the player who lost, and I know some of you were probably rooting for him. I just checked his profile. And he lost two more games after this. That's really sad obviously got a little frustrated i'm sure but he kept going and he had a nice little win streak and he seems to really enjoy making lots of man at arms with armor and remember i talked about the timings in this game his timings improved so he kept at it and he got a couple wins under his belt so i just figured i'd edit that in at the conclusion and mention it because it might make this video a little bit more interesting but anyways be careful out there if there's one spectator it might be me and if it's not me don't say you're going to report the guy. I mean, come on, just chill out. You're you're you didn't get your eco upgrades. You you're missing you're missing the whole fight. What are you doing? Stop looking there. Anyways, thanks for watching. One final thing before I let you all go. I am headed to Australia, and according to my YouTube analytics, there are quite a few people watching from Australia, and I thought if I'm headed over there that we should do something cool. So if you happen to be anywhere near Sydney, Australia, I'm hosting an Age of Empires 2 meetup on August 12th at 7 p.m. local time. There will be drinks, there will be food, you'll get to hang out with other Age of Empires 2 fans and get a chance to meet me, take some photos and all that. I put all the information in the description if you're interested in this. Ultimately, the goal is just to have a good time, but if there's computers there, we might do some gaming too. So again, just check the link and buy a ticket if you're interested. Would love to meet you, and thanks for watching.